On today's show, we are delighted to have Ms. Nellie Shen with us. She is a member of Parliament for Port Moody, Coquitlam. Ms. Shen is also the Deputy Shadow Minister of Canadian Heritage for Her Majesty's Official Opposition. Please join me in welcoming her to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Molly. It's a pleasure. Well, I want to start by congratulating you. I know you are a first um, member of Parliament. And so as a, as a woman and as a woman from the minority community, I think it's such a great honor to have someone like you representing us in the House of Commons. Thank you so much. So why don't you share a little bit about, with our viewers what your experience has been so far? Well, certainly with everything that's happening with the pandemic, it's been quite a journey. It's been, um, it's been one that's been very emotional because uh, you, you see a lot of people who are struggling mm -hmm. and needing help. And sometimes the, the help doesn't come fast enough. And so it's been a race against time, uh, watching businesses um, close without a fighting chance. There's been a lot of things that the pandemic has created that are challenging, mm -hmm. but it's also um, allowed me to feel very, um, very much that I'm accomplishing something really important, uh, helping people in their real times of need. So it's very rewarding in some ways to be uh, a member of parliament during a crisis like this. But uh, my experience as a parliamentarian so far has been far from boring. <laughs> it's been very interesting. And I've been meeting lots of wonderful people um, in my community who care so much about uh, the vulnerable um, justice issues. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very much been a journey of uh, witnessing the goodness of people. Mm -hmm. um, and so even though we are in a difficult time, it's been also wonderful to see lots of compassion and generosity also pull through. All right. Now, how is it? when you're all on the hill, what sort of uh, camaraderie or cooperation uh, do you see? Uh, because, you know, outside it feels like, uh, you know, it's a very partisan atmosphere, but what is your experience? Well, certainly uh, during debates, during question period, <laughs> it is a theatrical, there, there is a lot of <laughs> animosity and yes. um, hostility and, and uh, reciprocating um, heckling here and there. So. It does have sort of a uh, amphitheater kind of uh, tone. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, uh, it really depends on the member of parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some who are from um, across the aisles uh, who are very um, easy to get along with and want to work together. There are others who are more reserved and would rather um, uh, sit closer to their colleagues and their parties. So it's, it's a mixed experience, but for the most part, I think, uh, with this pandemic, it has brought us together, closer mm -hmm. together than further apart. All right. Now, let's switch a little bit towards your uh, portfolio. You have a very important portfolio. So why don't you share with us what does your portfolio entail? So I am the Deputy Shadow Minister for Canadian Heritage, mm -hmm. and I absolutely love it because it's so dynamic. There's so many uh, different parts to it. Uh, we have sports, arts and culture, uh, like music and uh, performing arts, um, publishers. We also have um, the CRTC, uh, television, radio, um, different museums and historical societies. We cover all these uh, cultural institutions. And it, what's really exciting about these is um, the way I perceive this file is to uh, use them, see them as opportunities to uh, bring unity to, into our country and really uh, work through these cultural institutions to uh, bring respect and um, increased uh, love and commitment to our country. Mm. And so important in a, in a country like ours, right? When people have come from pretty much every nation. Uh, or in this world is represented some way or the other in this country and to be able to celebrate all our differences respectfully and being Canadian. I think that's what it, this is all about, right? Absolutely. Um, one of the things I love so much about Canada is that is the diversity. There are people mm -hmm. from all over 
the world. And when they're here, they can be themselves in their cultural heritage mm -hmm. of their origin and also fully Canadian in their experiences here. So it really is a unique experience to be um, a Canadian from another country because it, it's no longer, you're no longer just um, a person from your home country. Like from, for instance, for myself, I'm Korean. I'm not just a Korean, I am a Canadian Korean. And that, uh, that is a very unique identity that someone in uh, Korea uh, doesn't share or someone who, who grew up here who doesn't have a Korean ethnicity uh, cannot identify with either. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, Canada allows that to happen. Yes, and I think that is what is so unique about this great nation of ours. Now, that reminds me, are you not the first Korean ever to be elected to the House of Commons? Uh, yes, I'm the first um, MP of Kore Korean origin. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, I'm sure that your community is very proud of you, right? And because now you will be, your community has someone to represent. Um, and it's always such a delight to be able to see the diversity of this great nation uh, now being represented in the House of Commons as well. It's such a wonderful thing. Um, so coming back to your portfolio, um, one of the things I would like to bring to your attention is, um, you know, um, CRTC has a certain budget. And so with that, along with all the other responsibilities that CRTC has, it also funds a lot of the media outlets. Um, and that's a good thing because then they don't have to worry about getting ads or whatever else, and they can be on the air and whether it is television or radio. But there are lots of uh, smaller media companies like ours uh, and there is absolutely no funding that is available for us. So people like us, you know, we have to pretty much finance uh, our programs ourselves. So what can be done for, for media companies like ours? I think uh, you bring a very important point. Uh, sometimes uh, in the system, uh, the, the, the real champions of the smaller communities or the niche voices uh, get lost uh, from underfunding and uh, they get lost in the gap. So I think what's really important to examine uh, what can be done to actually help these smaller media outlets who are essentially like small businesses, small mom and pop shops. And I know sometimes it's just when they run per one person or two people and, and there's not a lot of um, capital to work with. So I think it would be important to see, recognize what those gaps are and see if there are other ways to, to fill those. And, and also actually, before we get there, we have, to, um, we have to recognize that they are legitimate outlets that do need the attention. And Absolutely. that's an area where I've been trying to work. Oh, that's great. You, I, I remember there, uh, there was a speech that you made in the House of Commons. So let's take a look at that. Liberals announced $45 million of funding for free and weekly periodicals. This includes ethnic media. But that funding will be divided among approximately 2,500 outlets, including English publications. The National Ethnic Press and Media Council of Canada said that this will barely scratch the surface and will not counter the pending collapse that awaits ethnic media. If the Liberals truly believe diversity is Canada's strength, will they stop treating ethnic media like an afterthought? Our own minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for the question. Our government has been there for Canadian media, and we have been for years, Ma Madam Speaker. We've invested more than $650 million to help media across the country. Ms. Shin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Many ethnic communities look to ethnic media for information about their local cultural community and news articles written through the unique lenses of their ethnic Canadian identity but they're struggling to survive because of revenue loss caused by the pandemic. Will the Minister of Canadian Heritage be including ethnic media outlets to receive part of the $500 million funding for cultural sectors? If so, how much and which companies will benefit? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the question. In fact, uh, we've already been investing in these media in more than 12 languages in Canada, more than 900 newspapers, 500 radio stations and TVs across the country. Thank you. Ms. Shin. Thank you. 
in, in doing so, uh, have they been part of then the $30 million ad buyout? And if so, will the minister provide my office with a public report that identifies which ethnic media companies were included and how much was spent with each? Thank you. The Honourable Minister. The answer to the first question is yes. The answer to the second question is we're still compiling that list, but we will be, we'll be happy to, to share it with them. All right, so um, it, it appears that you have a heart to help media companies like ours. That's what we can gather from the speech in the House of Commons. Um, because I, I, I tell you, it is so necessary. And uh, because there are, um, there's a large segment of people who watch programs like ours, like we've been on the air for almost 10 years now, mm -hmm. and there are many other media companies like ours, um, and then um, to, it's so important for our voices to be heard by our viewers. And so um, how can you help us? You're looking for a champion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, as I said, the first stage is helping uh, politicians or those in positions who can help uh, the smaller, um, especially ethnic media outlets mm -hmm. uh, to, to feel that they are legitimate voices that need that separate specialized support. Yes. Uh, and in one uh, of the question period debates, I asked the Minister of Canadian Heritage, uh, you know, the Liberal government uh, calls, uh, says that diversity is the strength of our country, and yet why is ethnic media an afterthought? And he, he was offended by that, and, and actually came, his comeback was, uh, we fund many, uh, we fund media, lots of media outlets, and he didn't use the key word there, which was ethnic media. Right. So just totally missed the point and proved my point. And I can't really blame him because I think it's just one of those things as we're growing as a nation, as a multicultural nation, we just need to, as we come to awareness of it, address it. And so that's what I'm trying to do is address that it's really important that people recognize ethnic media outlets are necessary, not only in uh, bridging that language barrier gap for new Canadians, but there's a nuance and a feeling and an experience that comes with that language and that sense of security that gives people when they hear news or programs in their own culture that helps them feel like they're at home mm. uh, in Canada and feel legitimate and valued. So I think, you know, as a diverse country uh, with many races um, and languages, uh, we need to recognize that uh, each voice, each unique voice is necessary to preserve and to support. Uh, so Canada is Canada with its mm -hmm. diversity. Absolutely, and we definitely need a champion. Uh, so uh, I would really hope and, and pray that someone like you <laughs> would take up our cause because uh, there are so many hardworking men and women who are working diligently, you know, every week. And uh, most of them fund their programs. They work hard and then they, they fund their programs. And they want to remain on the air because there are, you know, there are people who tune in, uh, you know, week after week to, to watch our programs. And so we want to be there as well for them. Um, and then once we have a little bit of help, we're not looking for uh, a lifestyle <laughs> funding, but just, you know, so our costs are covered. And I think that can help us quite a bit. Um, anything else you would like to share with us? Well, just to that point, uh, it's really simple. I, just even as uh, uh, an immigrant's daughter, and I myself have been an immigrant, I came when I was five years old with my parents. And I remember... For example, uh, the Korean programming on um, what is now Omni, there was a show called TV Korea, and mm -hmm. my parents used to watch that religiously, and it, it gave them a lot of joy. So it was great to see them coming home after working. Um, when we were young, they worked in a factory, and they'd work hard shifts, and they'd come home, and if they flipped the TV on on a weekend and watch uh, TV Korea, they'd be very happy and feel so relaxed and, and uh, feel like they're at home mm -hmm. and when they'd open that Korean paper um, and and read these articles in their language they'd read it front to back uh, thoroughly and 
it was just I know the value of what it had on my parents mm. uh, working hard coming home and having something where it gives them a sense of rest uh, so it's it's really about um, honoring the dignity of immigrants and those who have ethnic identities in saying that we value you and the culture that you come with. So I think it's very important. All right. I, I believe we have found a champion <laughs> in Ms. Shin. And so um, if you have any questions or concerns that you have uh, for her, we're going to add her name and contact uh, on the screen and you can contact her or if you wish to contact us directly, I can be reached at 647-979. 3220. Thank you so much, Ms. Shin, for being here. Uh, we look forward to having you back here with us again. And thank you for being our champion. Well, Molly, I that's very um, humbling. <laughs> um, and I will do my part to uh, certainly try to support the ethnic media um, communities. But I do believe that you are a champion and have been a champion for Multicultural Voices uh, with Chai with Molly. So I actually uh, took some time to uh, present to you today uh, a letter and a certificate in recognition of your contributions. And I'll just read a little bit here for your readers to uh, hear uh, so you can share this letter with them. That um, it's a pleasure for me to officially recognize your contributions to Canadian multiculturalism and media as producer and host of Chai with Molly. Thank you for providing a safe forum for Canadians of diverse backgrounds to participate in meaningful dialogue that promotes trust and respect building. Your efforts to build cross-cultural unity is critical to the strength of Canada's multiculturalism. And there's a little more there, but what you're doing actually is not just multiculturalism. It's about instilling patriotism through multiculturalism and respecting that. And uh, this is a certificate um, in recognition of Molly Banerjee uh, for her long-standing contributions to Canada's multicultural heritage as founder and host of Chai with Molly, I present the Certificate of Honor. So thank you, Molly, for everything you've done for this. Thank you. This is so wonderful and such a great encouragement. And we will certainly keep going. And we look forward to working with you to bring this Chai with Molly to the next level. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You don't go anywhere. We have lots more for you. <laughs>